Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Despite the weather, West End has come out in grand style. Thank wow. you very much. It just shows the power of a public library to bring a community together. Thank you all very much. You know, in public service, it doesn't get much better than this, bringing a community together to celebrate a wonderful asset like this. My name is Gregory McCarthy. I'm president of the Board of Trustees of the DC Public Library. I'm joined here by a number of my colleagues from the board, uh, Vincent Reynoso, uh, Victor Reynoso, where is he? Faith Hubbard, Vince Morris, and Camille Anderson. And on behalf of them, I want to welcome you to the new West End Library. We're all, Woo! yeah, we go. We're joined by another, a number of other dignitaries, our mayor, Muriel Bowser. War II's own Jack Evans, council member. Yeah. Council member Anita Bonds is on her way. Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development, Brian Kenner is with us. The library's own Rich Reyes Gavilon, our executive director. Yay. And of course, Anthony Lanier from uh, East Bank. There's lots to do today. You know, it's customary on occasions like this to acknowledge the many, many people who work so hard to make this happen. And people following me will do that. But this project is a little unique insofar as there's a long list of people who actually went to great lengths to prevent this project from happening <laughs> and torpedo it along the way. But it's the holiday season, right? So let's just say you know who you are. <laughs> and we hope you're among the very first to enjoy this wonderful new building. But there are a couple of lessons to be learned. Doing new and innovative things, in this case a P3 involving public-private partnership, involving a slew of public and private interests can be hard, it can be difficult, it can make people nervous, and pushing it past all the naysayers is really, really hard. And to that end, I want to pay tribute to my predecessor on the, on the Board of Trustees, John Hill, and our previous Executive Director, Ginny Cooper, who, who pushed the ball up the hill against all the odds for many years to bring us where we are today. But this also speaks to the future of DC Public Libraries. We're approaching the end of a wonderful 10-year transformation of our library system. Counting West End, today, during the past decade, we've celebrated the construction or remodeling of 16 of our 25 branches. Yeah. That speaks a lot about our elected officials and the money and resources they put behind libraries. Another six branches are underway, under construction, or almost completed even. And we want to thank Mayor Bowser for putting Southwest, Southeast, Capitol View, and Lamont Riggs on the fast path to rejuvenation. And that only leaves three libraries to go in terms of our branches. And of course, there's our wonderful flagship Martin Luther King Downtown Library, whose modernization and expansion is well underway and ready to come online in 2020. Kudos again to Mayor Bowser for accelerating the funding for that by two full years. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. But that leads to the question of what's next for the library system, right? So since the Blue Ribbon Panel of 10 years ago laid out the vision for our libraries, our city has added 100,000 new residents. Isn't that great? That's fantastic. So there are neighborhoods now that have a critical mass for a new library branch. So DCPL wants to work with those communities, like we work with West End and our, and our elected leaders, to see if there are opportunities for projects like this, where we can leverage public assets to deliver a new branch library and maybe even some affordable housing, something our mayor cares about deeply. Though such ideas may not make sense for every neighborhood or at every site, but we think it's incumbent upon us to think creatively and find ways to make limited public dollars do a lot of things. So today, wander around this wonderful new facility and think of the housing and jobs and education and library services this is spawning, and let's think about how we can do this again. All right. But furthermore, I want to introduce Brian Kenner, the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development. Thank you, Gregory. Uh, very excited to be here. Again, I'm Brian Kenner. I'm the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development. Um, you know, this library, as Gregory was mentioning, uh, is really the culmination of so many people's efforts. And I just want to thank, start off by thanking just a few people. Uh, obviously, our mayor, Muriel Bowser, who will be speaking a little bit later, has been a clear champion, uh, not just for the West End community, but also to make sure that public benefits are delivered uh, in all the forms that it can be. So thank you again, Mayor, very much for your leadership on this. Uh, Director Richard Reyes-Gavelin uh, from the libraries, uh, Councilmember Evans, Bonds, uh, Fire and EMS, um, 
engine number one. Uh, one of the great things about this project, and uh, the great thing about my job is that I get to think about this project not just as a single library, but as it relates to the entire community benefits that were delivered. So we had a great, uh, back in May, a great uh, opening of the fire and emergency management uh, engine company number one. We had a great uh, ribbon cutting for the affordable housing, 55 units of affordable housing that was created also as a part of this project, and very happy to be here uh, to be able to celebrate the library uh, opening. In the deputy mayor's office, there are a number of people uh, who were instrumental to make sure that this happened. Uh, Anna Shapiro, project manager, Jen Castor, uh, one of our uh, uh, legal uh, folks on our team, Patrick Smith, uh, Shonda Washington, our communications person, Sarosho Padwala, uh, our director of real estate development. I also saw Polly Donaldson uh, from our Department of Housing and Community Development uh, as well here. Again, innovation is the theme. Um, we have to take advantage uh, of opportunities where we have limited uh, space, but we have uh, uh, really a, a charge to make sure that we are maximizing the benefits uh, that we get. You know, innovation is also something that I think that the mayor uh, has really charged all of us to think about. We need to be doing uh, even more uh, with sometimes limited resources, and I think that this library is a great example of that. Uh, with that, I am very pleased to be able to introduce our mayor, Mayor Muriel Bowser. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Isn't our library beautiful? I think it's uh, just amazing. And uh, recently, I've been able to open a few projects across our city uh, that just vastly exceeded even my very high expectations. And the Le West End Library is one of them. You heard from Gregory and from Brian that it's a fantastic opportunity for us to bring the public and the private together and for us to deliver some very important in parts of our public infrastructure. And that's a brand new fire station in a brand new library. So that's the type of partnership uh, we should all celebrate. Uh, I should also mention uh, that you are demonstrating to the city, the nation, and the world that we are no longer snow wusses in the District of Columbia. Can I say that? Uh, because it is uh, definitely, and I, I hope that is percolating, I know it's percolating through our government and through our city, uh, that we're going to take care of any and all snow and we're going to stay open in Washington, D.C. So you should know that your D.C. snow team is out in full effect for the winter weather of today, and we're going to be ready uh, for the west rest of the winter, too. Uh, so I know we have a lot of local leaders to thank for where we are today, and I want to start um, by recognizing and thanking the current and the past uh, leaders of ANC 2A. Give them a big round of applause. I know Chair Patrick Kennedy is here, Florence Harmon and Rebecca Coder, all commissioners who care very much uh, for this neighborhood and how we move forward. I want to thank Marina from the Foggy Bottom uh, Citizens Association, uh, as well as Sarah and Barbara from the West End Citizens Association. Please give them a big round of applause. And just like uh, a lot of projects around the city, sometimes we have to get over hurdles. Sometimes they take weeks, sometimes they take months, uh, and sometimes they take years. But at the end, even with all the push and pulls of how to make projects happen, almost always they're better at the end for it. Uh, and this is an example of how we can bring on uh, just wonderful, a wonderful library collection, um, public spaces, housing, and public safety amenities. Uh, and this vision, as you heard at the outset, is really uh, has been a part of a larger strategy uh, to make sure that we're bringing our public libraries alive. Uh, our city uh, is really a premier city in the world. I hope you realize that the investments that you made are paying off. I am the envy of a lot of mayors around the world because of the commitment we've made to public education, 
to our neighborhoods and to public amenities. That's why we continue to grow. That's why we continue to attract businesses. That's why we are experiencing some of the robust fiscal times in the history of the District of Columbia. And what that has allowed us to do is make the types of investments in all the people of the district, in all eight wards across our city, so that more people can experience our prosperity. So I want to thank all of our community members, our architects, our developers, our construction workers for delivering this beautiful project to the city. Um, but when you come here, you are going to be met by some fantastic DC government employees that run our libraries. And they are led by a very innovative director who has seen that the role of libraries uh, is changing uh, and that libraries must evolve to the demands uh, that their customers have. Uh, and that's not just borrowing books, although borrowing books is a big part of it. It's so much more that libraries will do uh, to respond to the needs of our growing and changing population in Washington, D.C. So please join me in welcoming our fantastic uh, library director and our chief librarian, uh, Richard Reyes Gavilan. Hi, uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Mayor Bowser, for all your support. Um, I sound like a broken record, but, uh, but the commitment that this city has made to its public libraries is uh, really unparalleled across this country. You've got libraries struggling all over this country, but this city continues to invest, and the residents really do reap the benefits of that. We've got seven other projects that are funded or uh, in design or under construction so that every community very soon will have the same experience that we're uh, about to embark upon here at the West End. Uh, so uh, the West End Library really does continue DC Public Library's tradition of delivering uh, dramatic and iconic destinations for, for community learning. And, uh, and while it does represent our 17th new or renovated library, it represents our first as a public-private partnership, a model that we're very much open to exploring for, for future projects. Um, Public-private partnerships take on many forms, and, uh, and they include programmatic partnerships that uh, can leverage private dollars to enhance the public library's capabilities. Um, some of those partners include the Friends of the West End Library. Are you all here? Yay. All right. Uh, the Federation of Friends of the DC Public Library. Yay. And of course, uh, the DC Public Library Foundation. Um, so these, these three organizations share a, a small but powerful uh, denominator, and uh, her name is Susan Haight, and yeah. so um, this morning I think she's going to be wearing her foundation hat, and I'm going to cede two of my minutes to Susan to say a few words because I am so extraordinarily thankful to you, Susan, and so happy for you today. So please, uh, come to the mic. Thank you. Thank you. I am uh, short, but I am powerful, so I'm... <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm here today to speak uh, on behalf of the West End Library of Friends, the Federation of Friends, and of course the DCPL Foundation. All of these nonprofit organizations support the library with their stewardship, advocacy, and financial assistance. The West End is exceedingly blessed to be honored with the work of two local artists, the DCPL Foundation commissioned and the community selected for public art. The first mural is this that you see here, and it is called Paragons of the West End by Andrea Gaither. Gaither, where's Andrea? Adrian. Here. Adrian. Adrian, Adrian, sorry. Adrian Gaither, here. Say hi. And she's been standing right here to talk about her artwork, so make sure that you talk to her. Um, it runs the length of the building, as you know, and the names of the, some of the West End most notable residents are hidden in these, these icons here. The second mural, Garden Party, is by Nikisha Durant, and Nikisha's right here. It's the focal point of the children's area and represents the happiness and wonder of reading. Both reflect the spirit and vibrancy of this library building. This is a great day for our neighborhood. We are about to open a center of learning for all of us to use. I'm proud to live in the West End, and I'm very proud of this facility. Thank you.
Um, so, uh, of course, our mayor is fabulous and cares deeply about our libraries, um, but she partners with a wonderful organization, uh, and that is the D.C. Council, uh, to make sure that these, uh, these buildings actually get constructed. Um, unfortunately, I know uh, uh, Council Member Grasso wanted to be here today. He couldn't be here, but we are so fortunate uh, to, uh, to have Jack Evans uh, from War II, and, uh, and uh, he's been so so instrumental to not only this project, but the MLK project and so many other things that we work on. So, uh, Council Member Evans, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. Thank you right. very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, we can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. It's a great day in the District of Columbia. Whoa. Look at the snows coming down and we're celebrating the holiday seasons and all of that. So I'm so pleased to be here today to join with all of you. You know, when you're this far down in the program, there's an old saying, it's all been said, but not by me. So I'm going to <laughs> add a couple of uh, comments here. You know, I was saying to Anthony, you know, when we first uh, started this project, we sat down with two really important people in the city. It was Pierre L'Enfant and George Washington. And really, so, and it's taken a while. Back then, we were worried about where to put the horses and everything, but we've moved beyond that. So this is an exciting time. I know, really. <laughs> Mayor's heard that joke before a couple of times. <laughs> and speaking of the mayor, don't we have a fabulous mayor in the District of Columbia? Give her another big round of applause, because she's doing a great job here. And my friend of 30 years, Gregory McCarthy, give him another round of applause to running the libraries. And I do want to recognize there are a couple other people who are very important. We mentioned the ANCs from Foggy Bottom, Patrick Kennedy, Florence Harmon, Rebecca Cotter, and we forgot Will Smith right back behind me here. So give him a big round of applause. Thank you for being here. From DuPont Circle, we have a couple of commissioners. Mike Silverstein, Mike's over here. Uh, Carrie Cunningham and Nicole McIntyre. Give them a big round of applause. I think I made up pronounce that wrong. And a couple of former ANC commissioners, because this has been going on so long. John Williams, Peter Sacco, and Armando Casari, right over here, somewhere I saw them. Give them a big round of applause. And um, let's see, I think I've got everybody that I wanted to mention, except I do want to talk quickly about Anthony Lanier. Anthony and I go back 30 years together, and there is no one who has done better work in the District of Columbia, whether it's Georgetown, Foggy Bottom, Capitol Hill, uh, up in Adams Morgan, everywhere. So, Anthony, I want to just recognize you, give you a big round of applause for all that you have done as well. So rather than talk more about what, um, what this means to us, I do want to bring a special guest up to the podium at this point in time. This is an individual who knows more about this area than anybody I know, because he was born and raised in a house on the site of where this library now stands. So we, could we give a big, warm welcome to the person who really is a Washingtonian, that's Colby King. Colby, could you come up for a minute? Give him a big round of applause. He is really uh, an extraordinary Washingtonian. Hi, Colby. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jack. Thank you, Ms. Madam Mayor, uh, commissioners, trustees. Uh, this is, for me, where it all began. Uh, this month marks the 60th an 68th anniversary of the publication of the Stephen Star, a newspaper from Stephen's school down the street. And I mention that because in that publication, and this is where I got my journalistic career started, uh, in 1949, we had an article about our visit to the Central Library. It was a very important time for us. We went there, they read books to us, and we had got our library cards. A year later, my father took us from our house, which is just a few weeks, a few doors up the street. We walked past this street on L Street over to 22nd and K. My father pointed us, my brother, sister, and I, in an easterly direction. And he said, to get to the Central Library, follow your nose. And we walked from 22nd and K to 7th and K. There we checked out books, uh, read books, walked back home, and we did that probably every week for several years. Uh, since that time, I've been in the diplomatic service I've traveled with a diplomatic passport, but the best passport that I ever got, <laughs> right here. All right. All right. 
And I'm, I'm so delighted to see so many young people here because you're going to have that same experience really in this building. Because when you come here, you're going to be transported to worlds that you've never seen before, to experiences that you've never had. That's because of this place right here. I, this is sacred space for me. My sister was born in 2326 L Street, saw my first TV right down in the basement downstairs. Kaladi's grocery store was right here. And I can go on and on, but I'll be just a doddering old man talking about, <laughs> about these things. But I cannot tell you how delighted I am to be here today. I think my name's up there somewhere. I, I tell you, I really expected my name to be held somewhere in infamy. I, so this surprises me too, but thank you very much for this. Not a minute, thank you for everything. Okay, sure. Uh, Council Member Bonds, are you here? She was on her way. I don't know if she, she made it. Is. Where? Oh, hands. come on. Come on up. Mm -hmm. Council Member Bonds, a couple quick words. The emphasis is on quick. <laughs> here, I'll hold you back. I won't steal All it. Right. Right. That's okay. Well, good morning, everyone. And this is such a delight. I hope that you, like I, are very excited about the way in which this library and this whole structure is presenting a new approach to so-called urban living in the District of Columbia. I think that when we look at this structure, we can say that this is one of the new approaches to neighborhoods having the amenities that they need and also having the housing that they need. Now, not everyone will live in the luxury units, I understand that, but luxury units help to pay for our affordable units. So I think that we're blessed with both types of housing as well as the amenities. So I look forward to seeing this kind of design in other parts of the city, and I commend the mayor and my colleague Jack for having the foresight to say yes to such a design. And to you too, the members of the community. Tremendous uh, crowd this morning. I think because we all know that doing this kind of design, and this kind of purpose will move us forward as a community. And now I know I've used almost five minutes and I should uh, no, you Jack great. is sweating here. You did a great job. All right, Anita, right, thank you. And now, the person we all want to hear from, he's very modest, and there are a lot of people who have been involved in this project. But at the end of the day, without his vision, without his leadership, and without his perseverance, this never would have happened. Let's give a big welcome to Anthony Lanier. So I don't want to thank the same people that have been thanked over and over again. I want to focus just that I am grateful to the mayor, to the public-private process, to all the council members who voted for it and stayed with us, to Richard and before him, Ginny Cooper's support. Uh, Jaspreet Prava was not mentioned, and, uh, um, and I am grateful to him. All of us are grateful to him. Um, um, I want to say that we had a SWAT team of the neighborhood always backing us and standing up and representing that there was consensus in the neighborhood in spite of allegations, and that was Susan Haight, Rebecca Cooper, and also not mentioned Joe Sternlieb, who was so traumatized by the process that he went back to public-private process, uh, <laughs> to the public sector. Um, I, what hasn't been said is that this is a building arguably perhaps the most complicated building or one of the most complicated buildings ever built in the District of Columbia. And it's a unique library for that purpose. These columns were Clark's nightmare. They uh, 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 managed uh, through them. Uh, the design was not the most flexible design for the libraries, but the libraries accepted that design was an important component. It is and remains a public-private process because behind there you will have a private sector 
uh, coffee, uh, uh, let's call F&B operation that stays open, you know, with the library and stays open beyond the library. It's also been designed. It's also been designed as a neighborhood uh, institution, thinking of the ANC meetings. How can they? Uh, work after hours, how they do they not have to stop the process at nine o'clock in the evening, and you can see all of these uh, functions when you walk through the library. Finally, I think this library, because of its location, is going to be testimony to the fact that we are an international city, and I, I look forward to seeing I look forward to seeing this library with uh, uh, many international publications as what they are made to be, centers of knowledge and experience, not simply a place where Colby can you know, pick up a book, as in the past, but as he alluded to, these are centers of wisdom and learning and, and, and represent the future of our communities. So for that and for the, for the willingness of everybody to work with us and to create something exceptional that is not standard, that is not uh, uh, common, uh, for, for them to work on tax structures that allow us to have a support fund for the local library to make sure that things that are not foreseen in the library budget can be implemented is a unique uh, undertaking. And so I hope you enjoy it for that, what it is. Again, thank you for your time. Well done. Well said. I think it's time for a ribbon cutting, and I do want to just say, I always, I never want to neglect to mention the great staff of the DC Public Library who will be here. Jaspreet Pawa, who was a wonderful project manager. Thank you, Jaspreet. Kevin Osborne, the branch manager. You guys are going to love him here. And now we're going to cut the ribbon. So uh, uh, library board members, can you join me up here, please? I think I think Colby is a more important ribbon cutter than I am. Colby, get in here. You're more important than me. Okay. Bye.